Amen. Y'all ready to get into the word? Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans 1, 16. Glory to God. What does this say? It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We need to not be ashamed of being Christians. We need to be able to proclaim his name everywhere we go. It says this, for it is the power of God. Y'all want the power of God? We need to understand the gospel of Christ. What he did for us, how he stepped out of heaven, came to the earth, walked the planet earth and healed the sick, raised the dead, demonstrated the power of God. He lived a life demonstrating the power of God. When he started his ministry, the Holy Spirit came upon him when he was baptized. It says the Spirit of God came on him. And the, uh, the voice of the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And we know from uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that at that point, Jesus started to go around doing good. It said how God anointed Jesus as Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. And all of the things that Jesus did, even though he is God, the son of God, he did as a man submitted to the father, filled with the Holy Spirit. Do y'all understand that? He did not do any miracles until the Holy Spirit came on him because he became the example of what we're supposed to do as sons and daughters of God. If you want to have victory in your life, you need the Holy Spirit working in your life. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's another event that takes place. When you're born again, you receive everything God has for you on the inside. But then he wants to fill you and come upon you so that you have power so that you can serve him. Power to live. Amen. You can't do it in your own strength. Amen. You know, people sometimes say, well, I'm going to come to God once I get my life straight. You can't get your life straight without Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is a fish of men. Like I always say, when I go fishing, when I catch the fish, the fish isn't clean. I never caught a clean fish. I always had to clean it. Jesus takes you just the way you are. Then he starts to change you. But listen, that word is, again, power. I love that word, power. I love power. How about y'all? Y'all love power? Anybody likes to watch uh, the NASCAR racing and stuff like that? You ever been to one of those tracks one time? Th- those engines, they pass by, whoa, it's power. Man, the men, the men they just, we just get all excited about that power. <laughs> Amen? When you go to buy your truck, you get, but what's in here? Four cylinder, where's the other truck? <laughs> I want some power in that truck. Where's that eight cylinder? We like power, you know what? Because power changes things. It will, nothing will change in your life without the power of God. That's right. We can try to do it ourselves. We can try to, to, to do it through psychology and through, to, through medicine and all. Thank God for all those things. But there's a time in your life when you need to come to God and receive power. Yeah. Life-changing power. Amen. When I got born again, there's a power that came into my life that changed my life forever, for eternity. And you could be sitting in here and you don't know God. Before you leave here today, you need to grab a hold of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. And I say this over and over again. Salvation is not just being born again. It's not just getting your ticket to heaven. Salvation is bringing you into deliverance from any addiction, deliverance from any demonic things going on in your life, deliverance from from anything that's got you in danger will bring you into safety, will heal your broken heart. Amen. We'll restore your broken marriage. It takes power. Amen. Come on. Some of you ladies know that it takes power for your husband to change. Amen. Yeah, somebody got a good amen. amen. <laughs> but it takes power to change your wife. It takes power for your children to get, to, to get a hold of things. Yes. And we try to do it in our own strength. Listen, you can lecture your children forever, but if there's no power... Ain't nothing happening. My sons used to tell me, just go ahead and spank me. I'm tired of you lecturing. (laughs) Honestly, I'll just take the licking and keep on ticking. So I just keep talking for another 30 minutes. I said, you're tired of my lecture. I'll give you some more. But you need to speak the word of God because there's power in God's word. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. See that word power? It's all over the scripture. And if we don't get a hold of 
of using this power. We're going to be Christians without any power. It would be a powerless life. But there's power when you believe God. Faith-filled words have power in them. Amen? So it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. So it's not just saying these things. You've got to believe what you're saying. You've got to really believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the gift of God is eternal life. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. You don't have power because of your goodness. And we're going to look at some scripture that's going to show us that. It's not because of your godliness or your goodness that you have power. It's because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And what he did is where you get your power from. Amen. For, who, for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And faith is where you have power. Believing God. Amen. Trusting God is where the power of God comes. Amen? I want you to go with me to uh, the book of Mark. Chapter 16. Verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And Jesus said, as Jesus speaking right here. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because there's power. In the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel because it is the power of God. You can't get away from preaching on what Jesus did for us on the cross. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. See, the reason there's power in Jesus' name is because Jesus is alive. Amen. You can say in the name of Buddha, nothing happens because Buddha's dead. Amen. You can say in the name of Muhammad, nothing happens because Muhammad's dead. But whenever you say the name of Jesus, the world says, don't say that name. Right. It offends me. You know why? Because he's alive. Amen. And there's power behind what he said. Yeah. And what he said is true. In fact, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father except through me. Amen. Oh, you're very narrow-minded. No, Jesus was very narrow-minded. I'm just preaching what he said. There's not many roads up this, uh, this mountain to heaven. There's one way. There's one name. There's one mediator. Right. And we're going to read it. Not just because Pastor Mark said it. I believe the written word of God to be the truth. Amen. Amen. And when you're a Christian, you've got to grab a hold of this Bible. It is the power. It's got the power of God in it. It's got the words of God in it. It's got the way to live. This will tell you how, to, how your marriage can succeed. Amen. 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 This will tell you how to be successful in life. Amen. This will tell you how to raise your children. Amen? This will tell you how to act, how to talk. Amen. This, this word is true. But the world and society wants to do it their own way. Oh, that stuff that's old. You know, we, we can live the way we want. You know, the, marriage is what the Bible says it is. I don't care what you believe. Right. I'm going to believe the word of God. Amen. They say, well, that's a traditional marriage between a man and a woman. No, that's a biblical marriage. Amen. But we don't want to call that a traditional marriage, but that's biblical marriage. Amen? But you better be careful, Pastor Mark. You're going to upset some people. I'm not going to upset people. The Word of God may upset them. That's why they get so upset, because it's not my words, it's the Word of God. Amen. But then they're going to blame me for repeating the message that Jesus Christ told us to go preach. You know, see, it gets, it gets real. Say real church. Are y'all going to get real? Does that mean I hate people? No, I love everybody. You, you got to love somebody enough to tell them the truth. Amen. 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 Speaking the truth in love, not in condemnation. And when you speak the truth in love, there's power. Amen. When you really believe it, you're going to submit your life to it, and there's going to be power in your life to succeed. Amen. 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 He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. Now, these signs are powerful signs. Yes. It says what? In my name, they will speak. I mean, they will cast out demons. Now, you see, in the name of Jesus, we have authority over demons. Come on. They, they, they bow their knee because of the name of Jesus. Yes. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. That he is Lord. He is King of kings. 
Now, now I've said this before. You see where they put the colon and it says, these sons will follow those who believe. Then it says colon. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. It could have been written this way because the translators I put those colons in there where they felt. It could say this, okay? These signs will follow those who believe in my name, colon. And we're going to find out that believing in the name of Jesus is where power comes from. Over and over in different parts of the New Testament, it talks about believing in the name of Jesus. But those who believe, it's, it's kind of the same thing. But I want you to know, when you believe in the power of the name of Jesus, there's power available to you. Yeah. I believe there's power in the name of Jesus. Right. Amen? Amen? And so it says, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons because they believe in my name. They will speak with new tongues because they believe in my name. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them or hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick because they believe in my name and they will recover. Yeah. That sounds like power. Yeah. Power. One of my hospice patients is at Oakmont was dying of, uh, of cancer. And guess what? We've been praying and taking care of him. All of a sudden, he don't have cancer no more. Hallelujah. He had stage four cancer that we had to release him. Yeah. And, and there was a write-up on, on him. The doctor said, this is a miracle. Talked about because of prayer, because of, of faith. And this man, when I met him, he was a man of faith. Amen. He spoke his faith. He believed his faith. He spoke those things that be not as though they were because he believed the word of God more than his circumstances. Yes. There's power. Yes. Amen. Amen. Dr. Egan was talking about one young man that uh, he, he, who was at the Bible college now was deaf and could not speak either. And at a crusade, he received his hearing and began, began to be able to speak. And he joined the, the Bible college. And now he can quote more scriptures than anybody else in that Bible college. Hallelujah. And he's ready to go preach because he knows about the power of God. Yes. Anybody ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? Yes. He was dying on his deathbed. And he, somebody gave him a Bible and he chose to believe what the Bible said more than what his body was telling him. And from there, God healed him, took him off of the deathbed, and he built one of the most amazing ministries of faith and healing that America has ever seen. Amen. Because he found out that there was power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's power, guys. Let's tap into that power. It's, it's a lot more fun to be a Christian with power than just kind of lollygagging along. Kesara, Sarah, whatever B will be. Yeah. What, what you going to be, the pinball in, in the devil's pinball machine? No. Boop, 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 the world? No. God has a better plan for your life. Amen. Amen. Then he goes on, he says in verse 19 and 20, he says, So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of God. Guess where Jesus is? He's seated at the right hand of, the God, of God. He is our mediator. He's our intercessor. Amen. And the power of God flows through what he did, accomplished for us on the cross. And now he's here by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The, Spirit the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father and the Son that's in your heart right now. That's in this church right now. And he says, you shall receive power. Y'all ever read that? Acts 1.8. You shall receive power. Say power. power. Come on with me. Say power. power. Ooh, I like that. Now y'all getting power. See, uh, I start rumbling. Man, whenever I was 15 years old, I bought my first truck, a Chevy 350. It barely would go. Then I started learning about how to put headers on it. Put some headers on it. Put me a, 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 a holly carburetor and aluminum intake. Change the lifters in it. Amen. Yeah. Put that cam in it and make it do blah, 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 power. <laughs> Woo! I like that power. And so when at 15 years old, I, I was working at 15. I bought that truck. Daddy didn't buy that truck. Yeah. Come on, young people, say hallelujah. hallelujah. I was working since I was 12 years old. Amen. Amen. I couldn't do much at 12, but I was working. Amen. Amen. The feed a pig cell. Anybody know what a feed a pig cell is? You go buy pigs over there. You know what we'd do? We had to separate the pigs. We, young boys would go and we'd handle pigs all day long. But we'd end up at the end of the day with about $20. And let me tell you, in 1972, $20 was a lot of money for a little boy. Amen. 
but I used to love that power. So on the way, to, whenever I drive to school, drive to school, every time I'd turn in front of the school, I always, y'all know what catching second is? Y'all want some? Had them sidewinders on it. How many of y'all remember those days? Hallelujah. But that power. How about Christianity with a little bit of power? Make you smile. Amen. Amen. I like vehicles that got power. Anybody else is on my team about that? When you want to pass somebody on the highway, don't you like a little power in there? Whoa. Then, then downshifting three times. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I have to pull back around. No power. <laughs> And that's how, <laughs> that, that's how some of y'all Christian lives are now. <laughs> You're trying to outrun the devil and you, you need a tune-up. <laughs> I want to tune you up today, amen? amen? Let God tune you up today. Believe. Believe there's power. Believe in the name of Jesus. And it says, and he went out, and they went out preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them. Now, I like that. To what? Confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Amen. Anybody need a healing this morning? Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's power to be healed. Walk in Jesus' name. Headaches. If somebody's struggling with headaches, I rebuke that headache right now. I, I pray that that pain will leave your body right now in Jesus' name. There's power. He bore our sickness. He took our pain upon his own body on the cross. And by his stripes, you are healed. Amen. Well, I don't know if that's going to work for me. Well, it won't. That's right. Doubt, unbelief is going to stop it from working. Amen. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Glory to God. Doing all right this morning? Yeah. All right. I'm preaching my own self happy. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when there's power, that makes me excited. I'm happy when there's power. Whew. Let's start with verse 1. For those that were here Wednesday night, we're going to get a little bit of recap. It's all right with you? Wasn't that good Wednesday night? Woo! For those that weren't here Wednesday night, I hope you enjoyed America Got Talent or whatever you stayed home and watched. I know some of y'all were working or whatever. I'd encourage you to come and like eat on Sunday morning some spiritual food and come on Wednesday night and get you some more spiritual food. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Therefore, I exhort you, first of all, that supplication, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving uh, be made for all men. We're to pray for everybody. For kings, pray for your uh, kings and all who are in authority. Why? So that we can live a quiet and peaceable life. You want to have peace and quietness? We need to be a church that prays for our leaders. Amen. 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 Well, all the crazy stuff going on in our world, we want peace in our house. Yes. He says, with all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of, the, of God, our Savior. God likes this when we pray for, for our authorities and pray for one another. Who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants everyone to be saved. Yeah. Do y'all see that? Yeah. He says all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. The only way they can come to the knowledge of the truth is if somebody preaches the truth. And the world hated Jesus and it's going to hate us too when we preach the truth. But the truth doesn't change because you don't believe it. The truth doesn't change because our society changes. The truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever because his name is Jesus. Amen. It is sure. And you know what? I love these professors, okay? There's no such thing as absolute truth. You know what I always say to them? Are you absolutely sure about that? <laughs> you're making a statement like you're ab that you're, you're, your truth is absolute, but you're going to tell me there's no such thing as absolute truth? You contradict your own, your own speech. Amen. Amen. No, there is an absolute truth and his name is Jesus. Yes. And he has given us his word and his word does not change. Amen. His name is Jesus. And you know what the Bible, the psalmist actually said, 
His, he has exalted his name above every name, but he's exalted his word above his name. Because the word of God is what actually gives us power in the name of Jesus. Because the word says there's power, there's power. Do you understand his name is a word? Jesus, Savior of the world? That's what his name means? There's power in the name of Jesus. Jesus is so powerful, guys. And I said this Wednesday night, and I hope it grabs a hold of you. Do y'all realize that man did not kill Jesus? There was no man that killed Jesus. He laid his life down. He says, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it up again. He so loved us, he laid his life down. The ones who were killing him didn't even know that they were fulfilling what God had told him to do. He said Jesus was crucified by the high priest, crucified by the Romans. But crucifixion isn't what killed him. That's right. He was on the cross and he said, it is what? Finished. I've done my work. Father, I'm giving up my spirit. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And he breathed his spirit last. He wasn't gone until he was ready to go. That's right. Y'all understand that? That's how powerful he is. And then he dies because he already knows I'm going to come back. I'm going to cleanse the temple. I'm going to forgive the sins of my people through the cross. And there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. It's in his name we have remission of sin. Yes. Acts chapter 10. His name. Believing in his name. So he dies and I know some people say he died, he went to hell. No, it says, he said to the thief on the cross, he said, today I will be with you in paradise. Amen. When he died, he went to paradise. Yes. Okay? Amen. He put the blood on the mercy seat of God to forgive all of our sins, to prepare the temple. Because that's what he said, the temple's going to be torn down, but I'm going to raise it up in three days. He wasn't going to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. He was going to rebuild this temple, the body of Christ, us. That we now have the ability for God to move back on the inside of us because our sins are forgiven. Your heart, okay, is the Ark of the Covenant now. Your heart is the throne of God. You always realize that? Your, your, your spirit man, that's, that's, the, that's where God dwells. Your spirit and God's spirit become one. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. That's like the holy place in the temple. And then the outer court is your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He does not dwell in temples made with hands anymore. Read the book of Acts chapter 17. Amen. It's powerful. When he died on the cross, it was for us to be forgiven so that now he can move back into his dwelling place. Because when Adam sinned, he lost that life. He was, he was separated from God. So if you don't know Jesus, you know what's happening in your life? You've got a hole in you so big that only God can fill it. Amen. Before you leave here, you need to say, God, move on in. Amen. And you know what? He says, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You'll belong to him because he's going to buy you. It says he, you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Redeemed means to be purchased back by the blood. Not with silver and gold of things that men call precious, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Whew. A blood covenant. He took my old wretched blood, filled with sin, death. You know, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one, Romans chapter 3. And then he gave me his blood and washed me, cleansed me. Now God calls me a son. He calls you sons and daughters because you know what? I can rejoice because my name is written. <laughs> he wrote my name down in the book of life. It says in the book of Luke, it says they came back. They said, we rejoice because demons are subject to us in your name, Jesus. He said, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you when you believe. Come on. When you walk in the power of God, that's power. Amen. But he says, don't rejoice because spirits are subject to you in my name. Amen. He says, rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Yes. Is your name written in heaven? Yes. Well, I don't hear nobody rejoicing when you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rejoice because we're, our names are written in heaven. Glory to God.
Man, I barely got down on this. It says he desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So if you can think of some bad dude or some person that's living in sin or, or a girl that's doing crazy stuff and all that, guess who's gonna, who can still save him? Jesus. Did he save you? Did he save me? Then he can save anybody. Come on. I love it. He talks about Mary Magdalene. Uh, every time you mention Mary Magdalene's name in the New Testament, Mary Magdalene, in whom Jesus cast out seven demons. In case y'all didn't know, she was demon possessed. Amen. 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 And then a, a little later, it says, Mary Magdalene, who went to the tomb, in whom Jesus cast out seven demons. We just want to remind you that Jesus changed your life. Yeah. And if Jesus can change her life, yeah. Jesus can change your life. Amen. 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 Peter, and who denied him three times. Every time they mention Judas, what do they say about Judas? Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus. Yeah. Even in the story before he betrays him, when they mention his name, they always put in there the one who betrayed Jesus. You know what's interesting? I'm just going to have to go there for a second. I'm going to be talking about prayer. I've been studying, getting ready to start teaching on prayer. And uh, it says, could you not tarry with me one hour? Jesus is praying. He goes, his disciples go with him. They, they, he leaves some behind. Peter, James, and John go a little bit further. Then it says he goes a little bit further and he starts to pray. He comes back and they're sleeping. And he says to Peter, he says, Peter, could you not watch with me one hour? He goes again, he prays, he comes back there in the same condition. He goes away again the third time and he comes back. He says, are y'all still sleeping? That's enough. He says, my betrayer's at hand. They, they're, they're here to get me, is what he said. Well, it's so funny that the disciples are sleeping, but the enemies of God are still awake. Come on. They're coming with pitchforks and, and swords and everything to capture him. Judas wasn't sleeping. Amen. It's amazing when we want to do the opposite of what God wants. We've got a lot of energy, but when it comes to time to do something that God wants us to do, pray. Ooh, I don't know about prayer. And then somebody says, hey, we got a party going on. Party where? Where? Where's the party? Super Bowl? I got energy now. Y'all don't amen me too much right now. You know why? Because the flesh gets excited when the flesh gets what it wants. When you start living in the spirit, you better get your flesh excited about serving God. Because your flesh doesn't automatically want to pray. Your flesh didn't want to get up this morning and come to church and listen to me. But some of y'all got your flesh under control. You got to say, you getting up and you going. Amen. You got you to rule your life, not let your life rule you. Amen. My flesh wants a lot of things. And sometimes I'm overtaken by it. Amen. How about you? Come on, let's be real. But I got an advocate between, between me and God, Jesus Christ. Amen. First John chapter two, and I can repent and I can get power to overcome those things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come when the devil starts to tempt you, you just got to put him in his place. Start singing. When, when you start getting tempted, you say, I got power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of the Lord. Get behind me, Satan. Yes. That's it. Amen. Then you're going to find a little bit of, then all of a sudden your, your, your body is going to follow your spirit. And your soul. Yes. But you let your spirit be the leader. Amen. Amen. And how do you get a strong spirit? You got to feed it. Amen. Amen. When you can watch 30 hours of television and you only get two hours of church a week. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And now you don't have to watch TV. We've got them cell phones. Yeah. Amen. Look at your screen time. See how much time you spend on a cell phone. And, and, and you know what? It's separating us from being in one accord, too. Amen. We're, we're not communicating. Uh, this generation coming up, they don't know how to, to communicate face to face. It, it's, it's, they, they'll just stay in a room and talk to whoever they want to on their phone. And sometimes you don't know who they're talking to. That's a whole other su subject. Though. Okay. Now, we, we finally get into it right here. Look at verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Men, the man Christ Jesus. Now, in case you don't know which one that is, it says, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. There is what? One God. Go back to that scripture. I want you to see that. This is the word of God. 
People said, well, Jesus Christ never said, he, the word of God never said Jesus Christ is God. It says it right here. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is God, then you're not a real Christian. Amen. There is only one God and one mediator. Between God and man. It's the plan of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But he's one God who manifests himself as the Father who is invisible, omnipotent, omnipresent. The Son who became present in one place, in one time, in a body as a man. Just like you and me. Amen. Amen. We're created in the image and likeness of the God-man Jesus Christ. You're not in the image of the Father. You, you, you can't be all, you know, omnipresent. So what did God do? God became part of the time-space continuum where he had a body and he got, took on time with us and began to live as a man. He is the man, Christ Jesus, the one mediator. So if you're mediating, if you're praying to God through somebody else, you need to stop. You don't pray to, to, to the Father through your mama or your papa or somebody that died already. The, there's one way to the Father and it's through the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Nowhere in the scripture do you find this stuff. Because that's not where my mediator is. That's not where my protector. He who dwells under the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. He will set his angels around me lest I dash my foot against a stone. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand but because I know him, it shall not come nigh me. Amen. Let's get with the word of God and let's put the word of God in our mouth. Amen. Because there's power in the word of God. One God and one mediator, not another mediator. Amen. You know why? Because only one God, Jesus Christ, died, laid down his life for you on the cross. He shed blood from his hands and his feet and his side. He wore the crown of thorns. He was the one that was beaten, wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. Not Pastor Mark, not a religion, not a priest, not even Mary. Amen. Mary did not die for the sins of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ did. I honor all of these great men and women of God that gave their lives and showed us how to live for Jesus. Showed us how to live for God and imitate their lives. Imitate their works. Honor them for what they did, but don't worship them. There's only one worthy of worship, and it's Jesus Christ. And to him alone, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Not to anyone else. That's why when somebody comes to me and says, oh, great man of God. They say, stand up. I'm great man of God. People do that. They'll come up to me and they say, it makes me sick. Yes. Peter, the apostle Peter, in the book of Acts, whenever they would go to bow down at Peter, he said, don't, don't, don't think that this happened because of my godliness or my power. Amen. This happened because of faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. So get up. Be careful. Amen. You're not, not supposed to bow to any statue. You're not supposed to bow to any person and worship anything but God, the Father. In Amen. spirit and in truth. Yes. When you give power to an object, you're giving power to the Apostle Paul says this, you're actually giving demonic power to uh, something. Amen. Come on. You've got to read the scripture. And you know the intention of Christianity through all these years was not to create images to worship. That's right. There were supposed to be images of icons to tell the stories That's of right. the gospel so that people who were uh, illiterate could go and they could see the way of the cross and see that this is what happened because they couldn't read it in a book. They could see it in pictures. Right. Amen. But then people begin to worship some of these icons and they need to be taught better. You do not worship icons. You do Amen. not worship anything physical. Amen. I tell this story about when I was a young pastor and this lady called since she had some demons in her house. She wanted me to go in and cast the demons out of her house. Well, when I went into her house. They had pictures of Jesus and all the windows and crosses everywhere and burning candles and everything. And I, I wasn't afraid before I went in the house, but when I went in the house, I got afraid. I was like, oh my God, they gave me the heebie-jeebies. 
No wonder she had a spirit of fear. She was creating her own spirit of fear. Open the curtains. Let the light in. Get all of that superstition out. But she had an agenda. You know what her agenda was? I think she had like 10 children. And her husband had passed away. And she said, I can't sleep in my house alone. I'm afraid. So she had to have one of her children staying with her all the time. So it was something to keep her children in the house. She was using it because she had that agenda. Of course, she didn't like my ministry because I said, you need to take all this down, open the curtains and get it. We can, we can pray, but th this spirit of fear is coming because of all the superstition. Guys, do y'all really believe a cross is going to make a vampire go away? No. There ain't no such thing as a vampire. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Even though when I was young, I had a spirit of fear. I put some garlic around my neck a few times. <laughs> That's because Aunt Sue and uh, Uncle uh, Larry and Tony and them, would, uh, would, would, they didn't make me, but I'd go watch movies with them and say, oh, my God. <laughs> and how many things we do like that? I don't know who was here when I did the sermon where uh, I broke a mirror I opened an umbrella and I went under uh, through a ladder. And I'm still here. Amen. See, all of those things. Uh, some of y'all, when you see a black cat cross, y'all turn around your car. Come on, guys. <laughs> Do you really think the black cat's going to give you bad luck? We live in, a, in a, a community and a world that's full of superstition. That is not yeah. real. Amen? Yeah. But the devil is real. Yeah. Amen? And when you get involved with like a Ouija board or you get involved with certain kind of drugs and all these kind of things, you're opening up your life to demonic things. Amen. When you open up your psyche to things that are spiritual, and I used to, when I was young, I did some drugs, that I did some mushroom tea or something like that, and, it, uh, and I saw crazy stuff. And it affected me for a, a many months of my life. In fact, I, because of a bad trip, I was walked away from all that kind of stuff and I started to look for God and God found me as I was looking for him. Amen. And my life changed. And I realized I had to repent of all that because I'm trying to have a spiritual experience without God. And the devil will give you an, a spiritual experience if you want one. Oh, yeah. sure will. That's for somebody up in here. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, you're going to have to come back next week. I didn't even get to my main scripture yet. I, I will uh, just close with teasing you with it. Let's go to the book of Acts in chapter 3. Look at verse 6. There's a lame man at the gate and he needs healing. He's begging for, for alms. And then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Power. You know what happens? He immediately receives strength in his feet and his ankles and, and he begins to leap and praise and worship God and everybody recognized this is the man that was laid at the gate. They knew this was a genuine miracle. So look at verse uh, 11. Now as a lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together uh, to them in the porch which is called uh, Solomon's greatly amazed. And it says they were filled with awe and wonder before that. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or look so intently at us as though by our own power and godliness we have made this man to walk. He's saying we didn't make this man to walk. There's power in the name of Jesus. That's what made this man to walk. So come back again. We're going to get into this whole story because this story teaches us exactly how powerful it is when you really put true faith in the name of Jesus. Come on up, worship team.